Hello YouTube. So here we are again, another day, another flight in the Beechcraft 1900. Today I'm going to be mixing it, mixing it up a little bit and we'll be flying on VATSIM, which means online with real controllers, which should be kind of interesting to look at. The flight today is going to take us from uh, Prague to uh, Bratislava, so that means Prague in the Czech Republic over to Bratislava in the Slovak Republic, so it's going to be about a 190 nautical mile flight. Uh, I use uh, Route Finder here uh, to discover, to find a route between these two places. Normally, commercial flights would not fly this route because uh, there is a bunch of restrictions on the individual fixes here, but I didn't really care, and fortunately the controllers didn't mind either, so we're going to be okay there. It's a fairly short route. Uh, it's going to be over in pretty quick order. Uh, and if we have a look over here on Skyvector, uh, the route's pretty straightforward. Uh, the V uh, departure the SID's going to take us over to the VOZ VOR. After that, we're going to be following on the UL993 uh, airway down to Berva, which is going to take us into the start into Bratislava. We're actually going to get vectored out from Berva, so we'll be landing on runway 31 at Bratislava via vectors. Uh, the initial video is kind of uh, chaotic, I have to agree. Um, this is obviously post commentary since I didn't have time to do uh, much commentary during the flight uh, and when you're flying real time with controllers uh, situation the situation gets kind of busy so we are going to be uh, I'm going to be splicing in a couple of extra comments where where applicable into the video initially it was kind of chaotic I was having trouble getting uh, the ATIS and getting uh, to the clearance de delivery controller in Prague for whatever reason my uh, connection to VATSIM was giving me trouble and I couldn't get to uh, to these channels so I had to get clearance del delivered from the uh, ground controller and take it from there and also I was having, so that kind of completely threw me off my uh, flows there and I kind of uh, fudged a couple of uh, items there on the list uh, after that it kind of picks up the departure is kind of rushed and uh, of course there's uh, also going to be a couple of mistakes that I'm going to be pointing out where applicable at the end of the flight I made a pretty bit bad mistake over at Bratislava which uh, Basically, I parked at the wrong gate, uh, and that's going to be kind of a fun thing for you guys to watch. You know, you're going to watch me uh, make a pretty bad mistake in real time, and, and I'm going to lament that later on. But uh, that's... Uh that's what's going on in this video. Uh, feel free to skip the initial few minutes if you're not if you're gonna get bored. Because initially, I'm just setting up the airplane and waiting for a, for a space there on the controllers and trying to figure out what's happening with the radios. But after that, it's kind of it's kind of gonna gonna pick up and we'll get going. So uh, the flight today is gonna be also carrying 19 passengers, and I calculated 1,500 pounds of uh, fuel for the trip there. Uh, the alternate. Uh, to Bratislava is going to be Vienna, uh, which is about 40 nautical miles away, so that's a good alternate airport to land at. I also do apologize for the audio quality there on the headset while, while talking to the controllers. Uh, my headset, which I have to use when I'm on, on Squawk Box, is kind of lower quality, otherwise Squawk Box gets confused if I have multiple input and out output devices connected to the machine. So I have to use my lower quality headset, so it's going to be kind of noisy, but you know, ultimately this is... Uh, it's going to be AM uh, VHF communications, so it's going to be kind of noisy anyway, so I hope that's not going to be a big problem. Uh, in addition, I'm going to be going over quickly to uh, brief the departure. So the departure we are going to get from the controller is going to be the VOZ1 Delta departure, uh, which is going to take us out of runway 06 climb out to a, a to an RNAV fix, which is Papa Romeo uh, 619 er then turn right to Papa Romeo 626, uh, over to Papa Romeo 627, and then to the VOZ VOR, which is going to be the last point on our departure. Uh, transition altitude at this uh, on this SID is going to be 5,000 feet. Unfortunately, my uh, um, the charts I have did not mention an initial climb clearance and the controller didn't give us one so in the end I end up uh, asking the controller for that which is going to be kind of funny and uh, without further ado let's hop inside of the cockpit hey folks so here we are in the cockpit and we are about to depart Ooh, departure is about 20 minutes away so I need to hurry with the initial setup clearing and everything uh, since, we're, since we'll be running uh, in real time 
Uh, it's already night out here, so I need to get on the way and get things really moving. Uh, I'm going to be doing a quick cockpit preparation uh, flow, and then I'll be contacting ADC about our clearance. So let's get going. Uh, the flow starts over here, so battery check. Uh, sorry, annunciator check. Uh, annunciators are lighting up, that's cool. Uh, we'll be doing the fire tests. One, two, one, two. Backups. Backups are okay. So there, temperature up, automatic, environmental control. We'll be setting up the local altimeter, which uh, actually let me check that. I'm over here. Uh, okay, PR. It's one zero one seven three zero zero three three zero zero three and they are reading the same thing. I have to check field elevation here because I don't have note by heart. Okay, we're reading field elevation, so that's cool. That's okay. The altimeters are correct. Uh, everything else is okay, and the auto ignitions are not yet coming on. What am I saying? Anyway, flight altitude, cruise altitude today is going to be 250. We're going to be cruising at the maximum altitude we can. We're carrying a uh, full complement of passengers, so it's going to be interesting to make, make our constraint there. Uh, trimmers coming on coming on the default position. I'm going to be listening up to the ATIS shortly. As soon as I fire up the avionics, uh, we are... Actually, we want to turn on the nav lights as well. wrong with my panel, just a second. We should be having lights up now. Let me check there. Okay, we do have lights. Uh, the navigation lights are on. We actually could have probably just uh, looked outside, huh? Yeah, left is on, right is on, so I guess the lights are okay. And I'm also going to be storing everything else. Uh, okay, uh, the cockpit preparation is ready. We now need to turn on the avionics and talk to ATC before we do a pushback and uh, and get rolling here. So avionics Five, on. Ten, Actually, yeah, I'm going to leave the EFIS this place off, and I'm going to be hooking up to the ATIS. We'll give it give it a listen, and then we're going to give those guys on. Uh, Gonna give those guys on there a blast. Uh, need to figure out the ATIS frequency here. And the ATIS should be at 122.15. So one. Actually, let's go that way. 122. One five. Let's listen to the ATIS if we get something. Okay, so nothing's coming up, so it's probably a non standard ATIS frequency, which is always a charm. And they're interesting, so. So I'm going to be talking to the livery and getting actually the, the actual ATIS frequency because it's not listed on, on uh, any sensible place. So we're going to be figuring that out from there. Frog ground, November 618 uh, Alpha Bravo for radio check. Sorry, that was actually deliverance, delivery. <laughs> okay, so nobody there. Oscar Kilo 6 1 and Papa C2 holding point on runway 06 uh, via Lima uh, Charlie and hold short of uh, Lima. Uh, hold short Charlie. Uh, uh, Oscar Kilo 6 1 and Papa C2 and I'll show you Mr. Dahino. Because the Lima Charlie, which guy is Biscuit, because the Lima. 
Actually, it seems it's going to be a while, so I'm going to be firing up the external power, calling the <laughs> external <laughs> GPU <laughs> here. <laughs> so I'm going to be calling in a GPU. <laughs> and, and make sure we got power on the airplane, because this might take a while. Okay, battery is charging. Switch this over to battery. Yeah, we got, still got good bolts. So at this stage I'm quite confused with the inability to get to the ATIS or to clearance delivery, so I'm sort of scrambling around the cockpit and trying to get back on my flow. Prog ground, November 618 Alpha Bravo. Is the ATIS available on 22.15? Because we're having trouble getting it. Speed air to 06, good evening, uh, say again. This is from... Speed air 06, hello. Speed of the 06 minutes of the good evening, so we are uh, in QA Lima, uh, waiting for this section to uh, date. Roger, Speed by 063, welcome to Prague, taxi to stand uh, 27 uh, via Foxtrot, uh, Hotel 1. Scope, stand by. Foxtrot, Hotel 1, uh, gate 26, uh, Speed of the 06, please. So apparently I jumped somebody on the frequency there even though I was listening to it. Uh, this sometimes happens when you switch frequencies and start talking right away. I did listen initially but and I didn't hear anybody, but apparently I jumped somebody's turn so I asked the request again later on. Prog ground, November 618, Alpha Bravo for radio check. Number 618, Alpha Bravo, losing the ground, 5 by 5 Six one eight Alpha Bravo. Uh, we would like to ask: Is the ATIS available on twenty two decimal one five? Because we are having trouble getting it. Uh, let me check. Uh, but uh, currently, this is still online on one two zero decimal zero five. Affirmative on clearance del delivery on two zero zero five. Uh, unfortunately, they were unavailable when we tried to connect to them. Well, we'll try again. Yes. If you are uh, able to uh, uh, come back to my frequency, I will give you uh, clearance. Speeder zero six three send by great break. Oscar Kilo suspect number four four six zero four. Prog delivery. So, November 618 Alpha Bravo radio check. And to top things off, I even tuned the wrong frequency here, so this flight is really getting off to a great start. Step number 4, Bravo 1, uh, 216, thank you. Speed, speed air 6, free squawk, stand by, please. Uh, Oscar, uh, yes. Oscar, Papa, uh, uh, contact with me. So, one, 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 eight, get some, uh, one, five. And we're slowly coming up to our departure <laughs> zone. So we, I'm gonna code in the flight plan. Just my pen and paper. There we go. Ground 618 Alpha Bravo, we are not unable to connect to either clearance delivery or the ATIS, uh, so could we please copy the clearance with you? Uh, well, uh, November Alpha Bravo, I stand by, I have a clear, uh, clear bit of uh, power uh, for you, and uh, I'll uh, call you back. Roger, 8 Alpha Bravo. So let's program in the route first. That's an interesting clusterfuck today. Okay, so that's our departure, and we're going to be flying uh, Victor Oscar. Speed is exceed the gate as a funny spell, sir. Thank you very much. Good night. Dobre, 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 dobre. After the. Dobre, dobre. 
Uh, November 618 Alpha Bravo, ready for your clearance. Ready, 8 Alpha Bravo. November Alpha Bravo, you are clear to, uh, if I'm not mistaken, to Bratislava, Wojica 1, Delta departure and with 6, and the school is 1437. Clear to Bratislava via the Vozice 1 Delta departure, squawking 1437, uh, 8 Alpha Bravo. Remember Alpha Bravo, read back uh, correct, uh, start up, push back approved. Push back and start approved, 8 Alpha Bravo. So, we're going to be setting up the squawk here, so 1437. Give it a quick spin there. One four three seven is set. Now I need to brief the departure, uh, which means actually need to identify which runway we're departing out of. Um, VOZ one Delta. So I'm gonna be departing on runway zero six. Um, yeah, that's correct. And I need to program that into my FMC here. Oh, actually, off MC. It's not an FMC. It's it's just the GPS, basic GPS. So the uh, fix here is gonna be Papa Romeo. I cut the boring inputting of the departure fixes so you guys don't have to sit through me uh, twiddling the knobs there for a minute or two. And let's check the departure and make sure it's roughly the shape we expect it to. Yep, that's exactly what it should look like. So that's cool. We have the uh, startup and pushback clear. So we're going to be pushing to the right because we're at stand 10. Uh, controller didn't ask us anyway, so he probably guessed at it. Uh, and let's run the quick. Uh, let's run. Actually, I want to check the initial climb here. Climb is to. Uh, good question. This doesn't say. Transition altitude is 5,000, that's cool, and... Zing out, Scott, you want my character to be checked. 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 Uh, there usually is a bunch of remarks pages here, which unfortunately I cannot absolutely get to. Which sucks royally. Okay, we're gonna be asking the controller there for an initial climb because I can't figure it out myself and Seriously, I'm running out of options to get it. Um, so actually, I'm going to be setting up my speed bugs here. 110, 114 for rotation, and 118 for the V2 speeds. Um, uh, for now, I assume the initial climb is going to be about 5,000, but uh, maybe... It's <laughs> Okay. 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 I'm going to be calling so we can assist the GPU. GPU can go away, we will request uh, pushback, it's going to be about a 40 meter pushback for nose right, it's called a tug, and we'll be uh, disconnecting uh, and then doing a then doing the uh, engine start later on. Losing ground, we got to say travel to seven one on taxi by Lima. This is actually two gates. Sky travel two seven one, losing ground, we got to taxi to stand two six by a fox trot hotel one. So let's let them finish and I'll ask for the initial climb. Taxiing two stand. Two six uh, Foxtrot Hotel One, Pedro uh, Two Seven One.
Prog Round 618 Alpha Bravo here once again. Uh, sorry for the uh, disturbance here, but I just want to ask, uh, what's the initial climb on the uh, VOZ-1 Delta departure? I'm sorry I couldn't uh, find it anywhere. Uh, an SOP, uh, initial climb is at uh, 5,000 feet. 5,000, roger that, 8 Alpha Bravo, thanks. Okay, so we have the initial climb. It's as I suspect it's going to be 5,000. Alright, and now we gotta check. Uh, so, let's turn on the cabin signs. Uh, we have. So, let's do the before start checklist. Cabin signs set, pressure is built, bleed air valves are open. Uh, altimeters are set and cross check. Takeoff data is set, departure briefing is performed. Uh, cargo impact stores are closed, they light up here. Uh, tail bars removed, syrup clearance is obtained, we have the beacon on and we'll be pushing back first, then we'll be starting the engine. So let's uh, check that everything here is happy. Yep, everything else is happy. So let's start the pushback. Brakes off, pushback starting. Better check that I'm not over pushing it. Okay, turning on the taxiway, which. Oh, there it is. Well, I guessed almost right. Okay, parking brake is set. And we'll be bringing up the ground chart, make sure we know where to go. First, though, we are going to be doing engine start, so standard start procedure. Engine auto ignition is coming on. Yes, let's turn off the avionics because we don't want to have a power drain there. And left starter and looking for 12% RPM. And we'll go low idle. Low idle. We have ITT rising and turbine RPM spinning up. At 45%, the starter comes off. Starter coming off. ITT stabilized, so uh, pull forward. To the Taxi to stand uh, seven one. Okay, uh, we correction. Have taxi the to stand started. six Let's fire one. Up the via generator. Via Check the electricals. Right generator giving good volts. Inverters giving good volts, so we can start the left engine. Actuating left starter. One more check on the parking brake there, because I'm never sure. Okay, parking brake. 12%. ITT rising. And fuel flow. Forty-five percent. Let this let the engine stabilize. Engine is stable, so we can turn on the generator and the inverter. Bring the other and bring the other engine down to low idle. I need to lower the volume on the engines a little bit so I can hear the controller. Avionics actually engine auto ignition for now off. Avionics is coming on. Pedo heat is coming on. Uh, rudder boost and the EFIS displays are coming on as well. The initial departure heading. Is gonna be approximately 060, so let's set that up. And we're gonna be going on to the GPS right away. Heading altitude select vertical speed. <laughs> Plus 1800, auto feather uh, test. Auto feather is good. Manual feather test. Manual feathering is good. We are five minutes late, so we need to get taxiing as soon as possible. So we have that. Uh, next, uh, actually, let's turn on the recognition. Well, we can turn on the recognition lights. Okay. We have auto feather armed. And before taxi checklist, the inverters uh, on okay. avion, avion, inverters, actually we must check them again, inverters are checked, avionics are on, radar GPS is on, standby horizon is on, uh, flight director test is not performed, this is not necessary, nav aids are set, we're going to be running the GPS, environmental mode is auto, that's cool, actually it's set the uh, flaps down to 17 degrees. 
gonna be setting actually well let's not set that up to high idle for now I'm gonna be muting the engines a little bit more because I can't hear the controllers and let's uh, give them a blast for taxi Prog ground 618 Alpha Bravo is ready for taxi Number 618 Alpha Bravo, taxi 2, holding point on way 0 6 uh, via Hotel Obstort, uh, Delta, uh, hold show to so runway 1 2. Taxi to zero, holding point 06 via Hotel Foxtrot, Delta, hold show runway 1 2, uh, November 618 Alpha Bravo. Okay, we got the taxi clearance, so taxi lights coming on, fully forward on the pro on the turbines, and brakes coming off, so let's rock, or something like that. Now we need to figure out where we have, where's hotel, hotel, this is, this is Bravo. Hotel should be just well. This one three. That's the beta range. Hotel is going to be to the left here. It's a strange thing that we have all the scenery floating up here. Okay, actually let's dim the internal lights a little bit because it's super bright. That's the wrong one, that's the one. And I also want to dim the cabin, so overhead and cabin flood. Make sure the guys over in the... Yep. Cabin is dimmed. Let's dim the instruments a little more yeah, so that I can still see them. And yeah, so we want to taxi Hotel Foxtrot, which is going to be Hotel Foxtrot Delta. So I can see our clearance, uh, roughly what we should be doing. We keep on Hotel here. Let's do the before takeoff checklist to the line. So, flight instruments, uh, actually this is the flight controls. <coughs> now, engine and flight instruments are checked, and we are happy there. Make sure we're following the taxiway, I don't want to be slaloming too much. Though, uh, auto feather is armed. Manual feathering is performed, flight controls check, flaps are 70 degrees, trimmers are checked. EGPW is not necessary. Takeoff data is 110 for V1, 114 for V rotate, and 118 for V2. Flight director is turned on. So, for takeoff checklist to the line complete, let's taxi out to the runway. Just, just gotta follow that. How hard could that be? Hotel is making a light bend over here to the left, which is kind of strange. Make sure we're not taxiing over the speed limit. We're not. 10 knots. It's an interesting thing that we have the lights here so elevated like that. It's probably the scenery designer did not uh, anticipate that we were going to be running with uh, better. Actually. However, Alpha Bravo contact using a tower on 118 decimal 15. Over to tower on 118 decimal 15, six, eight, six, uh, 8 alpha bravo. The controller gave me the wrong frequency here and I figured it out a little bit later, but at least it wasn't my fault this time. What the fuck? That's the right voice room, I hope. Rosina Tower, November 618, Alpha Bravo.
actually we are now on Fox Trout, that's correct. Stop it here and ask the tower again. Rusinia Tower, November 618, Alpha Bravo. One one eight decimal one five is what the guy said. So I have absolutely no idea why the hell I'm not getting anything. Checking the frequency now again. Let's go back to ground and in your ground, November 618 Alpha Bravo. What's the tower frequency again? Just to check. Uh, tower is online is 118 decimal 1. 118 decimal 1. Uh, roger that, sir. We got the, an extra 5 there. Thank you. 8, eight Alpha Bravo. One, one. There we go. Rusin in the tower, November 618 Alpha Bravo. November 618 Alpha Bravo, Rosnia Tower, good evening. Cross runway 30, continue taxi. Cross 30, continue taxi, 8 Alpha Bravo. Let's give it a give it some gas. And we're already pretty late, we're about 10 minutes late at this point. Okay, let's check the sectors here, so... That's all good. Doesn't appear to be anything on the on these runways. At least I don't see an airplane. Okay, let's just turn on the strobes for the runway cross, and then we'll continue our taxi as they commanded us. I'm gonna bring on my chart here again. Make sure I can follow the taxi along on the chart. Clear the runway so strobes can come off again. And let's look outside the cockpit again. German Air Force 1021, contact the radar 127.57. Let's speed up the taxi a little bit because we're taking a bunch of time now. Again, Foxtrot and Delta. They wanted us. Oh, I think I overshot Delta there. Well, I gotta cheat out and look out again. Yep, Delta's over to. Number When airborne, contact radar on 127.57, Alpha Bravo. So we're gonna go right here on Delta. It's interesting that they wanted to have us and do an intersection departure there, but it's okay. We are not gonna be encumbered by that. That's a question now. Where does that taxiway go? So it should undulate to the right. Number six one eight Alpha Bravo. Wind zero nine zero degrees five knots and zero six clear for takeoff. Zero six clear for takeoff, eight Alpha Bravo. So they give us a very early departure clearance, so I'm gonna be doing my before takeoff items now. So auto ignition is off, uh, environmental mode, bleed air, valves, switching on the transponder there, uh, coming up 
up on the runway pretty soon, so TCAS on. And I'm gonna do the. Uh, November 618, Alpha Bravo, now see you right on Delta. Yes, that's correct. Right on Delta, we got that. 8, eight Alpha Bravo. Peter hit for prop. Auto ignition engine and T-ice is off. Pedo heat is on. Prop levers fill forward. Transport of T-cast is on. Bleeder valves are off. Annunciators are good. And the uh, exterior lights are now coming on. So light up the Christmas tree. Landing lights and strobes. And actually we want to have the tail flood on as well. Coming up on runway 06, it's going to be a rolling departure, and very, very funny, 127, 57, five, five, seven better, I uh, would have loved to check the frequency there, but unfortunately, fantastic. Let's go, I'll jump now, so thank you, and we are back on the hours, and following it down Action. to the runway this time. 27, German Air Force 1021, uh, Wind uh, 1057, seven. okay, that's one. checked. Actually, we should have checked okay, the approach right. sector. Okay, and let's get the show on the road. So, clear for takeoff, so increase power once we're lined up, of course. And takeoff, so advanced power to the torque limit, do not over torque, or the gearbox will explode. Okay, takeoff power is set, correcting with my feet, a little bit of wind here, 100 knots. V1, hands off the throttle, V rotate, pulling back, and we are airborne. Gear up. As you might have noticed, the GPS hasn't picked up the initial waypoint, which is going to lead to a problem when I later on turn on the GPS and it tries to back me back to the airport. I catch it and re-engage heading mode and then figure out what's happening. Flying the airplane for a moment now, okay, 400 feet, and I'm going to be engaging the autopilot now. And I need to reduce power now to the climb. Prop sync is coming on. 1550 RPM on the props and switch over the tower. Cruising the tower, November 618, Alpha Bravo, 2500 for 5000. And let's go over to the GPS. Take a direct from here. November 618 Alpha Bravo. That's not good. Level 140. Level 140, November 618 Alpha Bravo. Now, just figure out what the hell was that all about. No, let's get rid of that. I want to get rid of that. And of course that's the problem. Okay, so it didn't pick up our initial waypoint. So 140. Gonna okay, I'm gonna be doing the after takeoff checklist a little bit. We need to go to the second waypoint here because it didn't pick up the. And Ready? let's go over to the NAF source, and we're on the GPS now. Okay, so the GPS has got us in, got us in its hands now. So IAS mode, increase power a little bit, and we need to do the after takeoff checklist. Landing gears up, yaw damper is engaged, taxi light is off, uh, flaps are up, and uh, bleed air valves are coming on. Environmental mode is. Auto cabin pressure is Heading one, five, zero, check five, after five, takeoff five, checklist complete. Okay, let's continue the climb and sync up the headings. So 150 on the heading here. 
So definitely a fudge departure, not really cool. But there, but there you go guys. That's what happens when you try to multitask and fly single pilot on everything. And it's gonna set in the VOR for the next thing, so it's one one we're gonna set in the VOZ VOR into our nav one uh, VOR radio, make sure we can track that. No, that's the wrong one. Decimal 116, decimal 3, not decimal 6. 116, decimal 3, BOZ is checked. It's dead ahead and we would expect to overfly it soon. Okay, that's all set in there and we can increase power a little bit. Actually, we already passed transition altitude, which was 5000, so set the altimeters up and cross check them 7400 7400 is checked we are squawking altitude so that's cool and now we can do the climb checklist actually actually we're going to be doing the climb checklist at 10,000 feet Okay, let's set this up to our speed. And that's going to be set up to our stall speed. So just in case we need to refer to our specific speed requirements. And I'm going to be setting this over to B2 so we know the safe climb speed. So how are we doing on fuel? We're good, actually going to be switching on the aux pumps, make sure we're emptying those aux tanks out. Coming up to the next waypoint here. So, 14,000 is set. Or 140, sorry, because we're already in standard pressure. What is... NAV2 radio is showing something, so I'm going to be setting it to some reasonable... Uh, <laughs> Okay, I set up my uh, NAV2 radio over to the VLM VOR, which is close to VOZ, just for additional positional awareness and situational awareness and tracking. November 618 Alpha Bravo, contact Praha, frequency 127.12. Praga 127.12, 8 Alpha Bravo. Praga 127, Alpha Bravo, contact Praga. <laughs> Broad right down November 618 Alpha Bravo one, level 112 climbing 140. November 618 Alpha Bravo Alpha Bravo Okay, so we got the final cruise clearance up to our cruise altitude, so we are all set up there. And I'm going to be slowing down now a little bit in order to bleed off a bunch of speed because we are accelerating here and the engines uh, would, have a, would have a bunch of trouble keeping us at this highest rate of speed. So even though I'm continuously bumping up the engine power until we arrive at 100% turbine RPM, as we speed up, as we actually climb out, uh, we are getting faster on the ground speed relative to the indicator airspeed, so we should slowly dis uh, slowing down our uh, indicator airspeed down to about 135 at two, level 250. So I'm going to be slowing down to about 140 knots here, and we can do the climb checklist now, actually, so that means that we can turn off the landing and tail lights. So the climb checklist, the altimeter standard and cross check, landing and tail lights are now off. Pressurization is uh, 
is checked. We are increasing on the pressure differential there. That's good. Ice protection not required. Cabin signs are going to be coming off. Fasten seat belt signs coming off. We can close that out. Actually, we can go now. Let's give it a bit more juice. We can still. We have still a bit, bit, bit of range on the turbines there. Okay, just checking there. So we got 140 knots, so let's keep the indicator airspeed. Now I can finally get a chance to actually look outside this. That's actually our strobe lights that were blinking there, and there's... I think that's Prague down there, or might be another city, we might have already left Prague, and of course wonderful, beautiful X-plane uh, ground clutter. So that's a lovely sight. Stay on top of the turbines. I always worry that this vacuum gauge is going to go out of range and we're going to lose the stall warning and everything, but we should be okay. We got clear skies, not a cloud in sight. Well, there might be some clouds over there, but other than that, it's mostly clear skies. And uh, we're doing all right here. Cool. So now all we got to do is complete the climb and then we'll be, we'll be getting We'll get a handoff around the BNO way fix here. I think that's what we're going to be flying. Well, ar around Ivoli or Pepic, I would expect a handoff to the. I would expect a handoff to the Bratislava uh, ACC. So there. Coming up on the maximum turbine RPMs, and there they are, so that's our maximum climb performance. I'm going to be uh, bleeding off a little bit more speed now. We are at max up trim, so that's going to be a problem for the autopilot to get us up to maximum to the maximum attitude that we want to do. That's alright. One, three, seven. Are we going to get any further than that? Ideally, I want to be climbing at about 135 knots now. That would give me a, a ground speed of about, eh, about 205 knots. So. Actually, let's help him a little bit with the yoke, because the autopilot... There we go. Up, 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 a little more. And this is the climb I would want to keep. So it's about 135. There we go. That's about where we want to be. Release the yoke back pressure now. Yeah. Okay, let's keep the heading synchronized. These guys are really quiet on the radios. Coming up on the last fix. Okay. Coming up on the last fix to to the uh, end of the star. Uh, Sid, sorry. And after that, it's going to be cruise. Okay. Let's. Can't see on my screen. Check out connection. 
121. So you got a Roger. bunch of wind from the right there. Sync up the heading. We've got a fair amount of wind coming from the... Uh, a fair amount of wind coming from the right, because we have to maintain about 127 versus uh, 121. 119 on the front course there, so we got substantial winds there. We're going to be overflying the VOZ. Okay, I'm getting rid of the charts for Prague and loading up the charts for Bratislava. We would expect uh, out of Burva. Actually, let me bring up the star charts here, the arrivals. So for Burva, we would we'll see about the. Actually, we will. Since the Bratislava Tower is actually not online, we're going to be uh, we're going to be bringing up the ATIS from the VACC site for Slovakia, for VACC Slovakia. So there we go. Let's grab the ATIS off the internet, like it's the 21st century. And there we go. And the current ATIS is preferred landing on 3-1. So that's going to be. A probably so which arrival is that gonna be? Gonna be arriving over Burva and it's probably gonna be the Burva 3 Sierra unless we get vectors, which we probably will. And that's gonna be an ILS 3 1 landing, so that's cool. are down to about 800 feet per minute on the climb there because that's the maximum wow we're getting a huge amount of wind a huge amount of tailwind here we're doing 279 knots ground speed that's insane two hundred and eighty uh, yeah VATSIM is kind of strange about how it simulates wind levels Let's hope it's not going to blow itself up. We're doing good on fuel. We'll be up here only for a short amount of time, so... That's going to be okay. Pat Pickwick... That's about 90 miles away, so we'll be... We got a bunch of turbulence going on now, as you can see the view is kind of shaky. I'm going to pull back on the yoke to get us up to a faster climb rate and finally get up to cruise altitude. As you guys can see, um, when I pull back, just when I just lightly pull back on the yoke, I can do sort of. I can do extremely smooth control inputs. So I'm pretty much just resting my finger here on the yoke, and you can see that the yoke is moving just a touch. This is uh, due to a modification that I've done to the yoke, to the uh, stock SciTech yokes. Um, they normally, the internal control is kind of crap, and I had to modify it by installing a custom joystick controller in order to get it to actually perform the way it could. So now I have extremely fine yoke control, which otherwise would not have been possible. 
So we're doing 286 knots on the ground speed. That's insanity. It's going to be an interesting approach and arrival. Okay, we're coming up on 250, finally, after a lot of time in the climb. And I'll be immediately going to cruise power, which is going to be about 2,050 pounds. Oh, hey, good evening, you guys. Uh, foot pounds on the engines. 300 feet to go. You guys, please roll it over the radar. Further climb in five minutes. Okay. All right, coming up on two five zero. So we can be. Thank you for coming over here. We'll be taking off uh, cruise, uh, taking off the auto feather function. Prague, uh, Bratislava radar is going to be in 12647. Setting that up in my radio, actually, yeah, 75. Alright, we are. In uh, okay, I'll be pulling back the power now to the cruise power setting. Alright, cruise. Auto feather is coming off. It's still a touch too high. There we go. Alright, and the cruise checklist. Cruise power is set, engine instruments are checked, everything is happy. Auto feather is off, and ice protection is not required. And cruise checklist complete. Checking the fuel here. That's all good. And we have a moonlit night, and that's pretty much it. Now, I'm fishing, calling, taking on both lines. Send the triangle 877. Let's turn on the stall burning heat just in case. Let's turn on the stall burning heat just in case. So we're cruising at 300. Oh, it's 7, cruising at 300 knots ground speed, which is absolutely insane. That's about a good 80 knots faster than we should be. The winds up here must be crazy. Sending flight level 170 ready. Uh, from the cargo There's an airport there. Speed 063, uh, go ahead. Speed 063, good evening. And that appears to be the Brno Airport. Yep, that's BNO. 240, direct, 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 direct. Nearest airports are LKHB, I think that's the Brno Airport, is it? Actually, it might not be. That's probably not. It's not going to be that. So LKTB should be the Brno Airport. Let's check that. Or Island, probably. 
LKTB okay, is, uh, is bearing, uh... It's bearing, uh, LKTB... Let's check that. LKTB is bearing 9-6. It's just to our right here, so it's probably that. Yeah, it should be the Brno Airport. It's distance, uh... Although... Uh, again, it's 40 miles away, so it's probably not that. That's way too far to be that close. Let's remove the cursor and swap back over to the standard view here. Can actually zoom that in. Oh, it's LKNA. Okay, so that's another airport. Bruno Airport is over there. Yeah, I'll probably be heavy thing nature to cover with you at Airbase. So whenever you are flying uh, in sort of these very dark conditions, you want to check, uh, make sure. In fact, whenever you're whenever you're flying, you want to. Make sure you have enough outs, that you have enough alternative airports to land at, and uh, that you essentially have contingencies whenever you're, wherever you're present, so that's the purpose of this page. It tells you the nearest airport you could land at in case of an emergency, and LKNA actually has a 7,800 foot runway with an ILS, so that's cool. So let's actually recheck the ATIS, make sure we know the wind conditions there. Wind's out of 0406 knots, so that's not a problem. Cab okay, fantastic weather, 2 degrees C. So clear skies, uh, well, almost, well, not necessarily clear skies, but there's no report of clouds, so it should be fairly clear skies. QNH is 1020. Okay, so now it's just the waiting out situation. That's the dull part. <laughs> Actually, let's check the VOR frequency on BNO and set it into our NAV1 radio, make sure we can track that in case we should need it. One fiber. Where is it? Well, it's 113.9 or 0. Three decimal nine or zero, pointing in the right direction. and contact the Haridar 127 decimal 5, 7, 5 2 knots and contact Haridar on which uh, frequency is again please? 550 pounds in the main tanks about 70 pounds in the aux tanks so we got a good 2 hours worth of fuel left at this cruise altitude of course at a lower altitude it would be less but So I'm going to be pulling up the approach plane. Are you with me? Uh, yes, sir. Uh, are you with me? So the instrument approach for action. Uh, I'm going to go. 
two stop from the right, hold to the right side. Okay, getting ready for the... Oscar, you're going to farm and heading to D6, zero, zero. I pulled up my approach plate for uh, Lima, Zulandia, Bravo, ILS category uh, one. One, three, zero. The localizer frequency is 110.7. 110.7 is set. Front course is going to be 310. And we're going to be. Uh, actually, let's all load it in provisionally. So we're going to be selecting an approach for now. ILS 3.1. We're going to be receiving probably vectors for now and just load it because we haven't been cleared yet. To simplify the briefing, I've decided to conduct the approach brief uh, in post commentary. So, the way you read an approach plate is you start at the upper right corner typically, which is where the, you, the name of the plate is described. So, you want to make sure you got the right plate for the right airport open and it, it's not outdated. Then, you want to check your navigation. So basically your horizontal and vertical requirements. So check your transition altitude, check your uh, runway elevation, and then continue down to the map. Make sure you understand where the approach starts and where it ends, where the uh, runway uh, orientation uh, is located and everything. Are, uh, and uh, then you want to verify your uh, vertical navigation. So below, usually below the map, there is a vertical, there's, there's a side view and the cross section, which describes how the approach is to be uh, proceeding on the vertical navigation across each waypoint. And then you want to make sure you have your t uh, radios tuned in, so, so tune in the approach yeah, frequency, so tune in the uh, potentially tower and listen to the ATIS. Uh, and lastly, you want to make sure you understand the missed approach procedures. So, missed approach for uh, this particular airport is going to be a uh, turn right to VOR J Juliet Alpha November and climb to 3000 and uh, maximum 185 knots. Lastly, we want to make sure we know the minimums, so we want to look in the minimums table and uh, set that up on your radar altimeter before you start the approach so that you don't have to worry about that later on. There's a lot more to how approach uh, plates are read and briefed in detail, but I don't have the time to go into this now. Maybe I'll do a video one day, but we don't have the time now. Uh, Roger, that unrestricted time for two. Level two four zero. Yeah. I need to do four. Four 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 is the correct report. That is for departure. I'm going to be setting up my nav two radios to a VOR at near Bratislava in order to be able to monitor the approach. There we go. That's the Juliet Alpha number the Jane of the VOR. One three four, that's one nine two. Thank you. Right to see my fire for two zero one twelve. Remind me, Bravo sixty one. I use two four zero knots. This is part of one eight two. Remind me, Bravo sixty one. I reduce two four zero knots. Two four zero knots. Yankee Uniform, Tango Victor on Hot, Green My Airspace, Mr. Unicorn 122, this is my airline, what's the time? What's the screen here? Tango Victor on Hot, Yankee Uniform, Tango Victor on Hot, Green My Airspace, Mr. Unicorn 122, this is my airspace, Mr. Unicorn 122, this is my airspace, Mr. Unicorn 122, Yes, either way, anybody for flight, please take 4 zero. You can see the noise from half of the people, you know. I mean, there is three for zero, you can see the way. Mandia Bravo, 631, this is part of one seven zero. Last, last message for sure. I'll show them the road, Mandia Bravo, 631. I'll show them the road, Mandia Bravo, 631. I thought that message was for me. Turn left, heading cat three one, and have cleared for high left approach runway. Right. 
あ今日なんか面白いと思ったこのブラカーボーディスンパーカーボーバーンスラバンゼロノンバー618アルファブラボ618アルファブラボ618アルファブラボ618アルファブラボ1415B20 ok so we're starting the descent now descending Producing a little bit of juice there. But we're gonna still be. My one. Remind the Bravo 61, contact the Haridar 127.5.75. We want to descend at about 180 indicated. Okay, so let's, let's turn on the fastest belt sign. Nice to follow for one after my one three clear for takeoff, wind one zero zero degrees, take off. And let's do the descent checklist. So approach briefing is complete. We're going to be doing the ILS 31. November 6, Bravo Direct Juliet, Alpha November. Ju Direct Juliet, Alpha November 6, Alpha 8, Alpha Bravo. Okay, so they wanted to go. November 6, Alpha Bravo, Bratislava Radar 1, 2, 3, 4, 7, goodbye. 26.478 Alpha Bravo. Thank you. Bye bye. So we first got to set in this thing. Uh, Prakar Azara, Ukraine, the next plane, zero eight. Uh, so uh, hello again, bound R two uh, level. So they want us to go to Juliet Alpha November. So that's straight to the VOR. Okay, VOR in Slovakia. Enter, enter, and that's going to do a direct intercept. Bratislava Radar, si November 618 uh, Alpha Bravo, level 229er for 170. Oh, man, 618 Alpha Bravo, hello, Bratislava Radar, radar contact, Eastern maintained altitude 6000 feet, when is 1021 and direct to Juliet Alpha, November VR. Down to 6000 and maintain a QNH 1020 direct to Juliet Alpha, November 6 Alpha Bravo. What the hell is this thing doing here? I want you to fly from my present position. So they want us to detect down to 6000. The transition level is 80. And we're going to be pulling back on the turbines a lot more than this because we want to make the descent. November, uh, November Alpha Bravo, expect the runway 31 for landing. Roger, 31, 8 Alpha Bravo. Okay, so I gotta go in the flight plan and delete these old waypoints because they're not applicable anymore. And after that, it's gonna be the IAF probably, the initial approach fix, although. Yeah, I'm gonna have them vector me, so that's not gonna be in a, a problem, I hope. So we want to pull back onto turbines now a lot. So there we go, that's flight idle. Ignitions are now armed. Shall we, let's turn those off, we don't need them. Now heading sync, the course is going to be, front course is four, 146. And I'm not sure we're going to be able to make 6000 there, so let's try it out. Let's set it up in the VNAV here. miles before JAN and yeah we're gonna have to descend a lot faster than this so 
Since we don't have a speed brake, it's gonna have to be the flaps, so pulling out the flaps... Well, it's not necessary for now. We might still be able to make it... Gonna be arming the auto feather now. Make sure we get auto feather if we need it. Absolutely no visibility outside, of course, because it's night. That's a, that's to be expected. And we want to set the pressurization. That's one of the items I didn't complete on the landing checklist because I got interrupted there. So landing altitude, landing elevation at Bratislava is... Airport elevation is 432 feet, 33 feet. Okay, so we want to set that to about 500, so in the outer and out there, it's set. And the pressurization should be now descending. Okay, we're getting uh, good, and the pressure differential is okay. Cabin signs are on, so we are good there. We have completed the descent checklist. Altimeters are going to be set at uh, 8000 to QNH 1020. Descending as fast as we can because they gave us quite a late uh, descent uh, clearance. Actually, I'm going to be programming in the next point after this, which would be on our approach just for positional and situational awareness. So, Charlie India 2 1, if I'm not mistaken. Cheers. Just a sec. Should be two, yeah, two, one. I hope. Otherwise, we're going to be entering it again. It's not that one, certainly. Charlie Andrea three one. Okay. Charlie India three one. Check. That's the end. Bratislava radar. Good evening, negative football with you on the Nitra. You are radio 131, 57 miles. Okay, check the descent here. Okay, so we need to descend a lot faster than this. Increasing power a touch and dropping the flaps. Increasing power a touch and dropping the flaps. We are at about 180 knots, so that's okay. We are at about 180 knots, so that's okay. We are, we're clear to extend 17 degrees of flaps at 188 knots, so... Roger that, maintaining flight level 270, but we would like okay. to continue on our patrol route, so we don't need any shortcut. Uh, Roger, so proceed, uh, um, present, heading direct to November, okay, India. Okay, and we are now and we are. coming back to the required vertical speed, 180 knots. So we would be maintaining that approximately for now. 78% of N1. You can put on the auto ignitions again because I didn't want them firing while we were in the descent. So that's kind of just a useless uh, ab abuse of the igniters there. And ideally we want to descend about a 5,000, 1,500. We're descending at almost 2,600 there, so that's definitely something to be kept in mind. Actually, we want to descend a little slower than that. The flaps are putting out a lot of drag, so we are going to be falling down pretty quickly now. But we still have a lot of wind in our backs, so that needs countering. It's 146, so we have a lot of lateral wind here. Sync up the heading here. At 10,000 feet, we're going to be dropping, uh, turning on the landing lights and the tail flood. So, actually, we can climb, get out of this dive now. So, I'm going to be pulling in the flaps here, pulling back on the yoke, make sure it's countering the effect of the nose down attitude, and pulling back on the turbines there. Let it settle. Let it trim out the airplane. Okay, letting that go now. The autopilot should be trimmed out. There's 10,000 feet, so 
landing lights are coming on and the tail flood's coming on. We should have, yeah, there's the landing and the recognition lights as well. Okay, and we can descend a little bit uh, slower than that, so there we go. It's turning on. Make sure the v vertical speed required uh, number is not increasing or decreasing. And we are getting close here, so I'm going to be turning, uh, I'm going to be tuning the NAV1 radio to... Uh, actually, I'm going to be tuning the NAV1 radio first to the J Juliet Alpha November VOR, VOR which is 110.8. So tuning, sending that over here. 110.8 showing directly ahead. And now number two, actually I can detune that I don't need the number two. I don't need the number two VOR radio for now. And we would expect uh, to get 6,000 pretty soon. Turn this back to flight idle. We want to be at Juliet Alpha November a little bit sooner than uh, we want to be at 6,000 at Juliet Alpha November just. Telemer Alpha Bravo continue descent to 3,000 feet. Descent 3,000 feet, uh, 8 Alpha Bravo. We're using the Slovak way of uh, shortening the uh, call signs there, which is not standard in the US. In the U.S., you would call your the last digit of your number and then the letters at the end. That's okay. We can manage that. So let's actually set that in here. It'll be three thousand feet at the initial approach fix, just for kicks. Okay, we're gonna make that. We're getting a bunch of changes in the wind positions here, I think, because we are uh, changing directions here quite a lot. It's getting to wind from the right, closing on in on Juliet Alpha November. Let's pull the turbines back to maximum. I'd rather pull the turbines back to flight idle. There we go, about 70 percent. Which is, yeah, well, that's, let's fudge that. Let's call that flight idle. You know, not going to be sweating it. There's a highway down there. Uh, I'm going to. I'll show you our microphone. Okay. On the Alpha Bravo turn right at 180. Right, 180, 8 Alpha Bravo. So over to the heading mode, 180, heading on there. And there we go, we're getting vectors now. Alright, 5,000 feet. Actually, we should be tuning now. We should have been tuned to 1020, so there we go. 3012, that's a little bit late. That's actually super late, so that's a mistake there. Clear mistake. Switching this over to the VOR localizer. Spin this around to the uh, frequency on the G on the ILS and tune the, the ILS in there. I'm still on the phone for Sierra. Hello. Practice power is up. Stand by. All right. One one zero decimal seven. That's set. There's a bunch of roads down here. Some municipal roads. I'm still on the phone for Sierra. We're clear for Alpha Flight to destination Vienna. Our runway is. One picket, That's the airport over departure. there. Initially climb 5,000 feet, code 1732, given age 1021. Okay, and they're vectoring us up for this runway over here. And I know a lot of towns around here because this is the city I live in, so there you go. Now all these places. I'm saying 744, I didn't make it correct. Start ready for taxi. So they want us down at 3,000, the procedure... 
Austrian uh, one zero zero kilo Bratislava radar, radio check. Right, about to hit three thousand. Radar L two hundred kilo radio check. I'm gonna check the minimums on the approach plate here. Straight and approach, we are. B category, so it's going to be 180. Hold down the 1 0 0 0 kilo. Bratislava radar, stop climbing to a flight over 240, please. Okay. Radio, you can take a flight over 240. Look for the 1 0 0 and scope for 7 2. Hold down the 1-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-0-
land the airplane. What's hard about that? I'm gonna wait until I am uh, fully established here. There we go. And I think we're good. I'll be disengaging the autopilot now, so my airplane. And just maintain this approach. It's not difficult, is it? I need to pull back a little bit too much on the turbine so that it disengages auto feather, which is why it's screaming at me over there. Because I need to slow down to my V2. Actually, I didn't set up my landing speed. There we go. That's a bug. In my brain, at least. So we're going to be landing at 110, uh, 110 on the speed indication there. There we go. Okay. And I need to fly the airplane again. There we go. Super big mistake there. Trimming and trimming and trimming because we are slowing down. Okay, trim up, trim up, trim up. As we are slowing down, the nose will tend to get a tendency to uh, fall down. So there we go. That's all good now. Right, correcting. Now we are Five back hundred. on the glide slope. Flight director is telling us 500, so checked. All right, so we're coming up to the first pretty bad error here on landing. The controller is going to ask me just a couple of feet above the ground to taxi out to the end of the runway and then take Foxtrot back to a stand. I misunderstand him because he starts talking about something about Foxtrot and I think he's, he wants me to take an early exit. So I, I say that I'm not going to be able to make it and I, I exit the runway earlier than that. So that's going to be a bit of a mistake, but that's not the biggest one. Landing. There we go, They're about, we're about at about the minimum approach speed, so we're going to be nosing down just a touch, and actually we're over on the left here, and... Oh, well, Alpha Bravo, we can run the via Foxtrot, so we'll taxi to end of the runway. Big hit via Foxtrot and taxi to the apron, uh, 8 Alpha Bravo. Alright, so here you can see that I got confused by his accent and I understood ru apron rather than runway. He should have corrected me, but he, he didn't, and ultimately that's my mistake anyway. And there we go, that's a wrap. And I need to identify where the Foxtrot taxiway is. I think it's over there. That was Delta. Hey, Delta Bravo here, sorry we couldn't make Foxtrot, so we'll take Delta. Uh, Roger, so we can left uh, Foxtrot and uh, correction Delta and Foxtrot to stand uh, number 3-1. Make it via Delta and stand 3-1, 8 Alpha Bravo. Alright, so this is the big mistake here. He said stand 3-1 and I even re read back stand 3-1 and ultimately I, for whatever reason, okay. my head inside yeah, stored yeah, the yeah, numbers yeah, in reverse, yeah. so I, I ended up taxiing over to stand 1-3 yeah. and then to made a mess of it completely, so uh, apologize for that. Okay, leaving the active runway, so lights off, flaps up. Gonna be taking TCAS off. Actually, Foxtrot is. Taxi to stand 3 1. So, fortunately, I put in taxiway mark. Actually, we don't want to turn over here. So even reading the numbers back to myself, I correctly read them back initially, and then when I do the checklist, I get confused and reverse them. So that's a big mistake there. So we're on Foxtrot. Complete the after landing items here. So environmental mode coming to good. Decision height selector trimmers. And complete the after landing checklist. So flaps are up, trimmers are neutral, transponder TCAS off, radar is coming off, that's well, something I always forget. Engine anti-ice, I always forget about that as well because it doesn't make any sense. 
Auto ignition is off, ice protection not required, external lights are off, and uh, decision height selector is zero. Hey, the do for for I mean, I said we terminated, uh, and continue with continue for one, two, two, this is more than a slide, and one thing, bye bye. Okay, I'm gonna be uh, pulling up the parking chart over here. Stand one three is over on the end, so. This is a bunch of scenery I did for Bratislava Airport. I'm going to be putting that up on the net so people can enjoy that as well. I put in a bunch more traffic than usually would be here, but you know, why, why not? It's simulated traffic anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Okay, Alpha, one Alpha, it's number three, three Alpha. Taxing speed is okay. Oh no, the phone calls, it's time to sell them. Thank you for the flight, work is hard, bye bye. Actually, I think there might be an airplane there on that stand. So let's stop here. I'm going to ask the controller there. Um, November 8, Alpha Bravo here. You wanted us to taxi to stand to gate 1 3? Uh, uh, stand 3, but uh, it's okay. Uh, so continue on general aviation <laughs> stand. Uh, it's okay. We are general aviation, so. Feel free to taxi us over to a GA stand. Just wanted to make sure I understood stand 138 Alpha Bravo. Uh, Alpha Bravo, uh, stand 31. It's, it's opposite to Foxtrot because um, I, I tell you that's the end of the runway because 31 is uh, right uh, on Foxtrot. Alright, I see it. So we sh should taxi back to three one, stand 31? Is that to uh, okay? I'll stand so for first here, I can't do other one two two zero. Yeah, it really doesn't matter. Um No and then I'll have a standard world choice. Stand 1-1 one, one is just to the right of us. Would that be okay, sir? 8 Alpha Bravo. Okay. Stand 1-1, one, one, 8 Alpha Bravo. Thank you, bye-bye. I'll stand 7-4-4 Sierra. Uh, so uh, you are in my airspace. No, for that, this is available. Switch to the command. Switch to the simulator. That was a bit of a... Have a nice one again. Vienna. But that was a bit of a clusterfuck there on the land on the parking. I didn't really expect a problem there, but apparently he wanted us on either stand three or stand three one or all stations, all stations, but this law is closing. Thank you for flying. Bye bye. And just in time because the ATC is going away today, so we'll just retune to some other frequency and we'll let them go. So taxi lights coming off, we don't need that anymore. And we can stop uh, right about the beam of that CRJ. Okay, parking brake is set. Fasten seat belts, actually we want to keep them on. We want to first 
Pito Heat, uh, Rudder Boost, Avionics is coming off, Environmental Mode is coming off, AC Inverters, Generator is coming off, and Engine Shutdown, Auto Feather is coming off as well. Burn us off, that's not necessary anymore. Low idle on turbines here. ITT stable, so shut down number one, number two, and props to Feather. Okay, there we go. So we could have turned on the EFIS displays before actuating the master avionics switch. And we are also going to be taking the engine anti-ice off. And just a quick rundown through the uh, shutdown checklist. Parking brake is set, GPS radar is off, standby horizon avionics is off, inverter is off, auto feather is off, internal external lights. We can turn off the beacon now, we can turn off the fasten seatbelt signs and actually we can turn up the cabin lights so everything can go to max for now make sure the guys can get out and let's open the doors so the passenger and the packs and the baggage doors are coming on we've now let the passengers step outside of the airplane but I'm gonna be completing the rest of my items here the pretty much the only thing that remains actually we're going to be standing here on the terminal for a while so let's bring up the GPU let's cancel these enunciators I'm going to be needing those there we go there's the GPU and let's turn on external power so that we don't drain the battery battery is recharging at 30 amps so that's cool and we can wrap it up here. I'm going to be doing a couple of replays after this. And thanks for joining me, got for you guys joining me here on this interesting and probably pretty comedic flight on Batsim. Uh, yeah, that's just the realities of flying with uh, virtual ADC, online ADC. Sometimes things end up being funny. Thanks, guys, and I'll see you later.